Hello there, my name is Dr. Carlo Oyer. I'm a board certified emergency physician and I produce medical education videos like this one. Today we're gonna talk about high blood pressure, but not just high blood pressure general education, but what, why, if you are on blood pressure medication, all of a sudden your blood pressure spikes and it's high. What are the triggers of high blood pressure? And I'm gonna be discussing some slides as we move through the different things that can cause high blood pressure spikes. So the first thing and most obvious is stress and anxiety. When you're stressed out, your heart rate goes up. My, my watch would even tell me, hey, your heart rate's up, above normal. Make sure you take a couple of deep breaths. You relax, maybe take a break and a walk so that you can relax and the heart rate come down. Heart rate elevation will also elevate your blood pressure. Uh, stress elevation will decrease the, increase the amount of catecholamines in your blood and your blood pressure will spike. So chronic levels of stress leads to chronic hypertension. So when you go to check your blood pressure, make sure you sit down, you relax, take a few deep breaths for about 20, 30 seconds before you check your blood pressure. Because even doing just that will decrease your blood pressure by five to eight points on the average. So stress and anxiety is a trigger and something that will spike your blood pressure. And second, obviously exercise. But exercise during the time you're doing it, the stress on your body will elevate your heart rate and will increase your blood pressure and make it spike up. But chronically doing exercise is a good thing because you get the spikes and the body tries to bring it down. So then when you're at rest, then your resting heart rate and blood pressure will improve. So just because you have, have high blood pressure and your blood pressure during exercise is maybe 180 over 90, that's okay because that's a normal physiological response to the stress of the exercise. It's what happens after the exercise when you start relaxing and, 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 and calm down that it should be better over time. Number three, symptoms of too much caffeine or stimulants of any kind uh, increases anxiety, headache, heart rate, and therefore blood pressure. So if you uh, yesterday drank a lot of caffeine or this morning you drank two cups of coffee, which that's not normal for you, that certainly will increase your blood pressure. Number four, Medications, there's a number of medications that people take both over the counter and prescribed that can elevate your blood pressure and you should be conscientious if these are new medications because they might spike up your blood pressure. Let's go through some of this. Obviously anything that's sympathomimetic, things that elevate your sympathetic blood system like amphetamines and, and stimulants like decongestions, ephedrine and things like that. Uh, things that you wouldn't think about like uh, ibuprofen, naproxen, things that are over the counter, NSAIDs in general, but also prescription strength COX inhibitors uh, that includes cyclofenac, celococcid, and so on. Steroids, if you're taking prednisone for a cold or for your back, that will elevate your, your blood pressure as well. Fluorocortisone, hydrocortisone, and so on. Caffeine, we already talked about that. And hormones, estrogen and progestins. That means birth control pills can elevate your blood pressure. Other dietary supplements like ginseng, natural licorice, your himbine, all those things can elevate your blood pressure when you take it. Some depression medications like SNRI, serotonin uh, medication related, those will elevate your blood pressure and some immunosuppressants. By no means this is the complete list of every medication but certainly a list of some of them that you should be aware of. So if you start a new medication and your blood pressure spikes, then you should definitely consider whether that's from the medication or something else going on. Smoking. Smoking is bad for your overall health and you should just quit doing it. But smoking specifically, uh, vasoconstriction of blood vessels can lead to injury and damage to the arteries itself. So that will elevate your blood pressure over time. Dehydration. Of course, mild dehydration initially increases your thirst, your heart rate goes up because there's not enough blood in your intravascular system, and therefore that can lead to an elevated blood pressure. But when you are very dehydrated, your blood pressure will be down because the intravascular volume is way too low, and then the blood pressure is down. So initially, a little bit of elevated blood pressure from mild dehydration, but then severe dehydration, low blood pressure. Alcohol consumption is bad for a number of reasons, but especially it can spike your blood pressure. So if you went out drinking, you had a couple of uh, cups of wine last night, then your blood pressure could be elevated today, secondary to that. Now, red wine has been shown to be good for cardiovascular disease, but it's one cup a day or something like that. Foods high in sodium, this is clear, anything that increases sodium. So a lot of the processed foods or foods high in salts, fries, 
soup and broth, pizza, cheeses, deli meats. You can see right here in the picture, TV dinners, biscuits, crackers, condiments, pickles. They have tons of sodium, which is good for some things like runners are using pickles a lot to reestablish their sodium, especially because they're losing it through sweat. So it's not like they're bad foods, but certainly foods that contribute to an elevated spike in blood pressure. And there are multiple medical conditions that can lead to high blood pressure, kidney disease, but this one in particular, pheochromocytoma shows up with acute, highly elevated blood pressure that is episodic. It happens in spells. Pheochromocytoma is a tumor on the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland is the gland that sits above the kidney and secretes certain molecules that can spike your blood pressure. When there's a tumor, there's a lot of this secretion, a lot of this um, uh, stimulation, therefore can lead to big spikes in blood pressure. And white coat syndrome. Some people have high blood pressures when they go to the ER or the doctor, but when they checked it at home, it's not high. So the important thing is that you have a way to document that. By going to your doctor, it's high, but at home, it's normal. So you should be checking your blood pressure at home. And if you do decide to do that, you need a good blood pressure cuff. And by good, I mean you something that's FDA approved, something that fits well, something that you have with you. So if they're very big and clumsy, you're not going to use it that much, something small and portable like this, then you keep at the bedside, you can check. It, it's, it saves your blood pressures. It links to your phone. This in particular is made by Check Me. I'll put a description below. And this particular model has something really cool. It can also detect your heart rate. Now you can count your heart rate. So what's that big of a deal? Well, not just heart rate. It has an AI tool out of the app to find out if your rhythm is normal. You could have a fib, atrial fibrillation, PACs, PVCs, all these kinds of abnormalities. All you have to do is go in the heart rate mode of the application, put your palms to the sides of the metal, and it'll go beep, beep, beep. So people with high blood pressures will also often have other issues with their heart, like palpitations, uh, chronic hypertension can lead to atrial fibrillation. So you, if you're going to buy a medical um, hardware that can do heart rate monitor and blood pressure, why not buy one that does both? And this is the Check Me BPA Connect, BP Connect, it's called. And I will put a description below for you. This is the one I use, and it keeps track of all my blood pressures, my heart rates, my, my EKG, if you will. So that's one way to differentiate the white coat syndrome to blood pressure that is spiked when you see the doctor, but is chronically also elevated. And that is it for today. We talked about 10 different things that will make your blood pressure spike up. Some of them very easy to identify, very easy to deal with. Some of them not so much because you need to be on steroids or on a depression medication. So in those people, you might need dosage adjustment, you might need alternative medication, or you might need to be on blood pressure medication during that time that you're taking that particular medication. And again, this particular product, Check Me Blood Pressure Monitor, there are many different versions of it, but this is the BP2 Connect, and it has the heart rate slash rhythm detector right on it. So check it out in the description below. Hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you on our next educational video. Bye-bye.